Hello YouTube and welcome back to another sensor spotlight. Today we're going to be looking at the mouse sensor and some of the Python attributes you might want to use it for your game in the Blender game engine. So let's take a look at the example that I have for you today. Uh, I have a menu system actually and this is going to be using the mouse, so a mouse based menu system. So we can play the game. Uh, my game's name, there's a cool cube there rotating. And we have this menu off to the right. All of the buttons except the options work. So for instance, if I go to campaign, I can click. This is the campaign. And I can press a key to return to the main menu. Uh, multiplayer, this is multiplayer. Again, and exit, of course, exits the game. And so this is a really basic example of what you might use the mouse sensor for. Uh, you can see each of these buttons is just wired with two little mouse sensors, one being a left button tap, and the other being a mouse over sensor, and they're both wired into an AND controller. The actuator that happens is what's going to happen whenever you actually click the button. So in the case of the campaign button, I'm going to set the scene to campaign. In the case of the exit button, however, I'm going to quit the game. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the sensor. Okay, so here we are looking at the mouse sensor. You'll notice it has all of the same buttons as the always sensor. And then we have this mouse event selection here. We have a couple options there. So we can choose left button, middle button, right button, wheel up, wheel down, movement, mouse over and mouse over any. You'll notice with mouse over any, we get this pulse option. So for these first three options, the left, the middle, and the right button, it is just simply setting the sensor to positive and triggering the connected controllers whenever that button is pressed. So with the left button selected, if I click the left mouse button, it will set the sensor to positive and then trigger all of the controllers that it's connected to. And that's the same with the middle and right button, it's just changing the buttons. Now, wheel up and wheel down will set the sensor to positive with each click of the mouse wheel. So normally whenever you scroll up or scroll down, you will feel these sort of uh, clicks. So each time it clicks, it will set the sensor to positive and trigger the controllers. And of course, up and down is just choosing the direction. So next we have movement. And this will set the sensor to positive uh, whenever the mouse cursor is being moved. Now it will set the sensor to positive and trigger all of the controllers for as long as the mouse is moving. Whenever you stop moving the mouse, it will set the sensor to not positive. So next we have mouse over. And this one basically will shoot a ray between the mouse and a game object. And this one will basically detect whenever the mouse is over this object, the object with this sensor on it. So for instance, I have this attached to a basic cube. So in the game, the sensor would be set to positive if the mouse cursor gets moved over top of this cube. So next we have mouse over any, and this will set the sensor to positive any time that it is over any object. So for instance, if I have multiple objects in the game, whenever I move over the first object, it would set the sensor to positive and trigger the controllers. Whenever I move over the second object, it would do the same thing. Now you'll notice here that there is a path where I can go over all of the objects without without going off of one of the objects. Well, what will happen is going over the first cube will set the sensor to positive and it will trigger all of the controllers. But as I move across the cubes, it's not going to re-trigger the controllers. The sensor is still positive, but it's not going to re-trigger all of the controllers. And the same whenever I move from the second to the third. And that's what this pulse setting does. So with that turned on, this will trigger all of the controllers whenever the object that the mouse is over is changed. So then these controllers would get one pulse whenever I move over the first cube, a second one whenever I move over the second cube, and a third one whenever I move over the third cube. Okay, so that was a look at the logic brick. 
So now we're going to hop over into Python and see what some of the useful attributes are over there. Okay, so here we are in Python, and you will notice that we are importing the events module again. Uh, we're going to use that a little later. And uh, we can get the sensor the same way as all of the other sensors. And moving on, we get the configuration attributes. And we have two different groups for these. So first off, we have the click movement and wheel mode. And the attribute in there is the mode attribute. And this will take or return an integer. And that integer represents uh, which one of these modes on the logic brick is currently selected or the one that you want to assign to it. And so the integers are left button is equal to 1, middle button is 2, right button is 3, wheel up is 4, wheel down is 5, and then movement is 9. So the next configuration group is the mouse over any mode. Uh, not just the mouse over, but this is mouse over any. Um, and this is use pulse focus equals true. Uh, again, you can set or read this, and again, this is the same as setting the pulse mode on the logic brick itself whenever mouse over any mode is selected. And so the first status attribute that we have is the position attribute. This can be used on any of the modes, and this will return the screen position of the mouse. So 0, 0 will be in the top left of the screen, and it will go up towards the bottom right to whatever pixel count the screen is. So if the screen is um, 1280 by 720, then the bottom right would give you 1280 comma 720. So next we have the click mode exclusive attribute, and this is sensor dot get button status, and this is a function, and it will take in either the integer representation of this event, or you can use the events module uh, dot left mouse. There's also right and middle mouse buttons as well. So next we have the attributes for the mouse over and the mouse over any. Uh, starting off, we have hit object. So this will simply return the object that the mouse is over. We have hit normal, and this will return the normal or the direction that the face that the mouse hit is facing. So for instance, if I move the mouse over this right edge, it would return a vector that is pointing that is pointing along the x axis. Uh, next attribute is hit position, and this one will return uh, the position that the mouse has hit the object at, and this is going to be in world coordinates. Uh, so if I hit this bottom right corner here, this would return whatever position this bottom right corner of the cube is. Uh, next we have hit UV and this is the same as hit position except it returns uh, the position that the mouse cursor has hit the texture at. So for instance if we had a texture that was applied to each side of this cube I could move the mouse over this texture and it would tell me where I am hitting in texture coordinates. So for example, hitting the left side of the cube on this face is going to return the same thing as hitting the left side of the cube on this face. Next we have ray direction, and this is going to be a 3D vector that describes the ray that is made from the mouse to the game object. So for instance, no matter where I move the mouse, if I'm over an object, the ray direction is going to return a vector that is basically pointing straight out from the mouse. So next we have ray source, and this is going to return the start position of the ray uh, in world coordinates. Now normally this is going to vary just a little bit, and that is because the ray that is shooting from the mouse to the cube um, is started at the camera. Uh, so it's going to be really, really close to the camera, so you're not going to get much variation in the numbers. And finally we have ray target. And this is going to be the same as hit position, uh, because it will return the 3D world coordinates 
representing where the mouse is over the current game object. So that was a look at the mouse sensor and some of the attributes you might find useful for it in Python. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'd be more than happy to try and help. If you'd like to see written descriptions of all of these attributes and functions, there's a link in the description below. And if you'd like to suggest a future tutorial, uh, it doesn't have to be a sensor spotlight, it could be anything, uh, there's a link in the description for that as well. So next time we're going to be taking a look at the near sensor. But until then, I want to thank you guys very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.